guy, kind of a junkyard dog in the post. Gaines Wyatt, Gambrel, Thorne, Kendall, Benet. The starting five for the Braves. Alley you flush. Nice look, nice find, tie game. Well, Alcorn State is definitely game ready. It's their third game this week. An insane schedule for the Braves as Hunter tees it up and buries a long three. Really like the backcourt of Chase Hunter and Joe Girard the third. They've really meshed well together early, even though they are new. JG3. In ACC play from last season. Five to two early. Deep three, the response, count it. Alcorn State will push the ball up the floor. They're not afraid to run and play five out basketball. Both teams on fire early after Thanksgiving. Clark responds with a three of his own. It's eight to five early from Little John. The Clemson team who was picked fifth in the ACC preseason poll. Finished third last season. Brad Brownell's group missed the NCAA tournament. A surprising decision by the committee. After an excellent year, Kendall misses the jumper. Here's Hall. Now to Gerard. Hall left it short. Offensive rebound to the Tigers. Gerard the floater. And a five-point advantage. Timeout taken early by Landon Bussey. Clemson, hot start at home right after Thanksgiving. Well, a veteran player, and Brad Brunell talked about it yesterday with us, and just said he's, he's adjusting to the new system. He's adjusting to playing with Chase Hunter. You know, they move without the ball a little bit more at Clemson. Uh, Syracuse offense was a little more isolation-based, pick-and-roll-based, but he's fit in well so far. Very long triple off the mark from he from 12, Thorn. And that leads to a JG 3-3. 13 to five. And right back to another timeout from the Braves. Well, the kick, kick out to Gerard. And what, the reason Landon Bussey is upset is his defense coming into this game, the game plan was don't leave Gerard on ball side penetration. Let the help come from the inside, not the outside, because the man guarding Gerard cannot help on that dribble penetration, but he can prevent Gerard from getting an open three, which they did not. Well, Alcorn State in the midst of an just insane road trip. Look at how many games this week they haven't seen home in 3,500 miles. Coach, this has got to be tough on the Braves, especially playing these teams. Well, big paychecks, but no rest. That's basically the, the thing. And But you know, Landon Bussey's not afraid. He never has been as a coach. He's been very successful at Alcorn State. He feels like this will prepare him well for his conference. The Braves lost 82 to 69 against Texas Arlington before hitting the road to Clemson. Spent Thanksgiving in Clemson before getting ready for this game. They won't play for two weeks after this one tonight. Nice looking stroke. That was Gaines Wyatt. Cuts the deficit to six. Well, Gaines now, Wyatt pressure. can get into the gap. He's good at dribble penetrating. Shefflin, no, Hall had it stripped away. Good defensive stop there for Alcorn State. Too strong, rebound cleared by Gamble. Good quick first step to find a little opening on the baseline for Gerard. Alcorn State, 15 wins in the SWAC regular season last year. 14 of them the year prior. Both times they lost in the SWAC tournament to Texas Southern. Looking for an NCAA tournament berth for the first time since 2002 as that jumper cuts the lead to four. How about that 
play from Kendall. Well, a good couple early timeouts by Landon Bussey. He got the message across to his team. They seem that right at the ship and settle down into this game. P.J. Hall gets into the scoring act. His first points of the evening, the ACC preseason first team member. Well, P.J. Hall, if you give him that much space, it's like playing two on two in the driveway. He's too big, too long, too good to give that much space to. Yeah. Injury last season for Hall. Leads by four, hustling it up and in. Kendall's had a couple of bright moments. Preseason first team all SWAC member. They have high hopes for him in that conference this year. Well, Jeremiah Kendall is a good player. 6'7", he's long, he's athletic. You see his mobility around the, limp, around the rim. 17 against the Horn Frogs earlier this week. How about that pass? You said it, Hall can do it all on the find to Shefflin. Well, the door closed on him underneath the basket on that baseline, had nowhere to go, but just the great presence of mind to find his front court mate, Shefflin. 17-13. Tigers, four-point lead early, knocking off Boise State, 85-68 in their last matchup on November 19th. Blew out the Broncos there in the second half as the runner makes it a two-point game. Well, that's what Alcorn State wants to do. They want to play fast. They space the floor, really move the ball quickly around the perimeter. Good ball movement led to an open three attempt from Clark. Hall was pushed underneath. That'll take us to our first media timeout. Tigers by two at home early. Thank you. Every night of great battles, and uh, it, it's just I just love these conference battles. Whether it's the ACC, SEC, or the Big 12 Big East, they're just they're all fantastic. All right, because. Early, you talk about five to ten years ago, teams did not play anybody early. And all you have to do is take a look at Clemson's schedule early and know that Brad Brownell said, wait a minute, we're going to load up and find out who we are. And at the end of the year, either we're going to win these games or lose these games. But we're going to prove to the NCAA committee this time that we're not afraid of anybody. They weren't afraid of every, anybody last year, but sometimes you schedule people early. You don't know if they're going to be good, but you just look at their schedule coming up. you got at Alabama. Then they start the league play at Pittsburgh. Then they have South Carolina, then TCU, and at Memphis. So it's uh, not an easy road for Brad Brownell. That Bama game, Tuesday, November 28th at 9.30. As both free throws are missed. How about the Canes going to Rupp? That'll be interesting as well for Jim Laranega's squad early in the year. No, they're very good. You know, they proved that already this season and obviously last year going to the final four that program is playing with a lot of confidence right now acting like they belong and they do hey. little zone from alcorn state put back it's i'm not going to fall like rj Grot godfrey into the game now for the tigers roger jones 62 junior from albany georgia Controls the rock, step back, three. Too long, offensive rebound, but it's going the other way. Well, Landon Bus is gonna change defenses. He has to, I mean, that's, obviously the schedule's been brutal early, but the thing is, they've, they're giving up almost 85 points a game, so he's gotta try to work, change the defenses, keep Clemson off balance. You see the little push off. Not much there. Not a lot of size for this Alcorn State team. One of the smallest teams in the country, according to Ken Palm. Nice ball movement. And a three. Chase Hunter. Now Chase Hunter really adjusted to the new role a year ago, playing point guard. And now you can see how comfortable he is off the ball, on the ball. And Clemson does a good job of spacing the court, sharing it, and reversing the, reversing the basketball. Clemson by five. Drive, kick, three, not gonna fall. Foul on Alcorn State as Godfrey went up to grab it. Godfrey, the 6'8 sophomore from Suwannee, Georgia. It's been a lot of shoving around inside, and but when you don't have size, you have to find another way to get it done. 
Uh, Brad Brownell has pointed out the depth being a reason for optimism. Guys like Godfrey, who just lost the ball out of bounds for a turnover. Alex Hemingway, Chauncey Wiggins. Guys, at last year, they felt like they were a young coach and said the depth, there was a fall off once we got to our bench. We're hoping this season, we're gonna be able to give you more sustained numbers and effort. Well, I think Brad was very happy with the effort of the freshmen last year, but they're freshmen. And you, you play in the ACC, playing at the highest level, uh, you're gonna have your ups and downs. And you know, they had to rely on those guys with injuries last year, so they gained a lot of invaluable experience. But I think now they're, they're seasoned veterans, even though they're only sophomores. A guy like Godfrey has already improved his numbers from three points per game last year to nine points per game so far here on the new campaign. They still defend at Clemson, one of the best defensive teams in the country, forcing a late heave and a shot clock violation. Tigers by five at the under 12. native and kind of a guy coach that's gone under the radar but done a terrific job at Alcorn State five games in eight days for the Braves all on the road they do get two weeks off after this one they won't play again until December 10th inside knocked out of bounds Godfrey was trying to post up a smaller defender it'll stay with Clemson well, the, the travel is the obviously the hard part, but then the next issue is the lack of practice. When you have so many games in a short period of time, you don't really have any time to improve on maybe your weaknesses, and that's been an issue. Did a nice job there, didn't they? Preventing the inbound. Timeout taken by Clemson. We'll step aside. We'll be back with the inbound play. What you Last year, 23 wins, 14 of them in the ACC. Somehow didn't get in the, AC, in the NCAA tournament. Went out of conference schedule. Not one of the strongest in the country last year. They said that they've tried to improve that. And uh, Coach Brownell said it to him. I mean, he said, we've got to have more emphasis on some of these non-conference games. There is a sense of urgency, but they have moved on. Well, from a basketball perspective, I will tell you he is highly respected, uh, not only as a as an X and O coach, but as a program builder, does things the right way. Uh, his players are always very rarely you see his players have a problem, get in trouble. So Brad Brunell is dude, Clemson's very lucky to have him. Go down Wiggins on the fast break, extends the lead to seven. A late loss last year to Louisville really killed the Tigers. Coupled in with losses to Loyola, Chicago in non-conference play. A tough one to South Carolina as well. They've added JG3. They added Jack Clark. You lose Hunter Tyson to the NBA. It's an older Tigers team. They've got depth. They've got talent. Maybe the evolution of Chase Hunter makes all the difference. And an ACC that's much improved as well this year. As Hall counted and won. Well, I think Brad feels comfortable with his rotations, and, and, you know, a lot will be found out here in the next couple of weeks when the schedule steps up a notch, but here's what makes Hall so good and so tough, and they do a nice job of spacing the floor. He's got room to roam and operate down low, and then they find him on ball reversal. He does a great job of sealing off and carving out space and then finishing with the good footwork. Hall now with five, Tigers by 10. And Coach, last season, 14 ACC wins, maybe didn't hold the same amount of weight, but the conference this year seems to have taken another step forward. They have some great out-of-conference wins so far when you look down the list. Oh, there's no doubt about it. You mentioned Miami. Uh, I think Virginia is going to be good, obviously. Uh, North Carolina and Duke, I and mean, North Carolina, even though they lost to Villanova, I think they're going to obviously be there uh, much improved from last year. They just had a lot of tough things happen to them with injury-wise during this season. But uh, Duke is back to being Duke again, that's for sure. Uh, you know, we'll see what Florida State is. I think 
they seem to be better, and uh, I don't expect them to be down like they were last year. We'll have to see if the ACC is as deep as it was a couple of years ago. First one's knocked down. Tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern, the ACC Huddle Crew will get you set for another afternoon of football. At 6.30, get a complete wrap-up of those games. They prep you for the primetime matchup on ACCN at 8 Eastern. Then after the game, they'll have a full post-game show to wrap up the night, all of it right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Bendel splits the free throws. Nine-point advantage. Clemson was on a 7-0 run. Again, Alcorn back Harrison. in that aggressive zone. Leads to a turnover. And a transition opportunity for the Braves. Thorne. Good contest, somehow found it, banked it in. A high degree of difficulty up top for Thorne. Coach, how do you want to see the Tigers attack the zone? Well, they're doing a good job. They're going high, low, three out, two in, and then it's moving the ball, and they're going through the middle of the floor. That's what you have to do, shrink the defense and kick it back out that way. That time Hemingway had his feet set. One of the best three-point shooters in school history. 43% of his makes. He has attempted 18 shots this season, now 19 with 18 of them. Coming from beyond the arc, he's in there to do one thing and one thing only. Well, he's good against that zone, but you have to shrink the defense first, and that's what Clemson did. Looked like they forced the turnover. They might have got a touch. They're awarding it to Alcorn State. That's well, good defense by Clemson, but sometimes offense by accident makes it happen, and Thorne did just that. But you see the zone, they do a good job of moving the interior pieces, the, the two inside guys, in and out, and now they kick it in, and they go back out to the perimeter to a wide-open Hemingway. Technical was given to Landon Bussey. And so the Tigers get two free throws. Oh. Missed them both. Wow, Hemingway. A good free throw shooter. Yeah, Landon Bussey said, come on. You gotta be kidding me. The ball was going out of bounds. There was no one within 15 feet of it. Officiating for Lee Castle, Clarence Armstrong, and Adam Floor here tonight. Sometimes you can get a T when you least expect it. It didn't cost him there. That short jumper won't fall for Hall. Nice rebounds by Alex Sinkovich, the junior from Belarus. Sinkovich got a big body, throws it around on the inside. Now Hall fouled on the rebound attempt. Uh, that'll go against Kendall. Now Sinkovich got his body around on the offensive end, but that time he just banged into Hall. They're going to crowd Hall whenever he catches the ball on either end. Kendall. Nice work, and go to the line, foul on Shefflin. When we return, so far, Clemson in control. 
you got to give Paul a break. Bring the caterers in, but you know, a lot of those great wives, they, they like to be in charge on Thanksgiving and look like a good time. They know how to eat in Clemson, South Carolina, that's for sure. I asked Brian Brownell what was going to be on his plate. And he said, I'm doing turkey and ham. I got to have both. A sweet potato. I'm all about the casseroles. Said we make a pineapple casserole. But he did say I miss being at my mom's house because I want that cheesy pecan pie. Well, they didn't eat too much. They look like they get a little hop in their step today. They're doing a good job attacking the baseline of this zone and spacing the court. Very active. Burning the slumber or right off, up 10. Foul down low, Kendall, guilty of it. It will go against Godfrey. It is an Alcorn State team coach that does get to the line at a high clip. They've done that well and they've protected the basketball. Be a nice evening for Kendall. The senior from the Bronx started his career at Prairie View AM. and yeah, What a week 13 ACC Network football lineup we've got for you tomorrow. Starts at noon Eastern with Pitt versus Duke, and then VT takes on a UVA. Capping the day, another rivalry. Carolina, 22nd ranked NC State, 8 o'clock Eastern. All three games also available on the ESPN app, so you can watch it anywhere. I have to admit I veered off a little hoops today to watch a little Miami Boston College in the ACC and Miami finished up pretty strong and I don't think they've ever really recovered though from the the kneel down debacle at Georgia Tech. No they did not. They did get their seventh win though against the Eagles today. How about the job Jeff Halfley has done though with the Eagles too with Thomas Castellanos at quarterback. And these Clemson Tigers will have their eyes peeled on the game against the South Carolina Gamecocks. Rivalry weekend. I give Dabo Swinney a lot of credit. Those gridiron Tigers have gotten better as the season has gone along. That shot's pure from beyond the arc. Dylan Hunter, younger brother of Chase, buries it. Oh, good job by Dylan Hunter. You, know, they, you can see how well-schooled they are against that zone. When the ball goes into the middle, both wings dive down to the corner where it's really hard for the forwards or the guards to slide down and contest. Ooh, long two. That goes down for Thorne. Well, most players like to play more than practice, and Alcorn State's had a lot of games this week, and they look like... You know, they're feisty out there. They're going to be tough in their league, and they're, but they're not as tough as this guy. He is just a load inside, too hard to handle with one man. Oh, this, this is so talking, versatile. This is what I'm talking about. They do a good job of going inside. They shrink the defense, and they're so well-schooled. You see Hunter slide down to that open area on the baseline, and then they space the court, and they go a little high-low from the top of the key into Hall. Conference full of really good big men, isn't it, Coach? And uh, P.J. Hall right amongst the top. It's interesting, though. You watch the big men around the conference and all around the country, and the game has changed so much in the last 10 years. The big men all can step out. They're good passers and make threes. It's not only just a post-up game anymore. You've got to be versatile as a big man, just like P.J. Hall. Bank shot. Gamble through some contact as well. Of course, Saints not afraid. That time, Gamble just put his head down, and they're confident when they get into that lane, even against bigger the size that they don't have in the middle. But they do have a lot of quickness and toughness. Bonus ball now here for Clemson. They'll be at the line. That was the eighth team foul on Alcorn State. Always coaching. Brad Brownell, even with 
One of the ACC's best. P.J. Hall actually got a couple of votes for ACC Player of the Year. High expectations. Well, they do a very nice job of putting him in great spots where he's got a lot of space, not only on the inside, but on the wing, on the short corner, and at the top of the key where he can operate to off the bounce. Clemson has slowly pulled ahead now by double digits. Oh, shooter's touch is good for beyond the arc. Gambrel's got the last five for the Braves. As Shefflin continues a strong first half for Clemson. Oh, he's really tough. And, you know, Brad Brunel just really talked highly about him yesterday. Spoke highly about him in, in the regard that he just does all the little dirty things that you need somebody to do in the paint. Called him a junkyard dog. 16 points, seven rebounds for Shefflin in the season opener against Winthrop. He's got six points here tonight. Great ball movement. Gerard. Mid-range, Jay. Nope. Hall, oh, offensive stick back, not going to go. Well, they call it basket interference on Shefflin. They do. Well, Br Brad Brownell thought it was off the front of the rim, and Shefflin made a good little tip. It's a great second effort. Sure what they saw on that one. It looked like it was off the side of the rim. That's what Brad said, look, see? The video doesn't lie. Clemson plus seven on the boards, shooting 50% from the floor. Massonet. Hawkins on the drive, great defense by Hall and Shefflin. Tigers look to run, the big men crossing the timeline, great feed, what a rejection. Well, Alcorn State has been feisty on both ends and they're not afraid, they're lacking size, but not Art or elevation at the rim. Clemson starting next week against Bama. Well, we know the schedule for them, but you know, the ACC is good. You, you look from top to bottom. It's a much deeper conference than it was a year ago. We mentioned Miami's better. Virginia Tech's going to have a good season. Pitt's been, they finished strong last year. They will. North Carolina's going to bounce back here. You, know, you got some other X factors. NC State, you don't know them. Looks like BC's improved as well. Out of doubt, Miami winning the Baja Mart with the win over Kansas State. Florida State knocking off Colorado. Maybe Coach Ham has got a much improved squad. It was a top 20 Buffaloes team in the Sunshine Showdown in Daytona Beach for the Knowles. Four points in a row for Alcorn State has cut the deficit to six in the latter stages of the first half. I've been very impressed with their energy and their toughness, their ability to change defenses. Their zone has been really aggressive, and they've done a good they've done a good job rebounding out of it despite their lack of size. The Braves have mixed in different defenses. Clemson has looked pretty good so far. Gerard from downtown and one. Now, no doubt, even, even when the ball's on the weak side of the floor, you've got to not extend over and get ball watching. You better know where Gerard is and be able to get to him in one step on the catch. And there you see on the catch, Massonet just too far. He rushed out, he panicked, and his closeout was out of control and he fouled him. Gerard, one of the prolific three-point shooters. Not just at Cuse, where he was third all-time in program history. Came into the day 11th 
in threes in ACC history. Matter of fact, that last one just passed Buddy Beheim for 10th all time. And JG3 could conceivably get as high as number two before his career is done. Only JJ Redick, he was pretty good. Remember him, coach? Uh, might be unreachable with 457 career threes. Did he play? I thought he was just an announcer. I didn't know that JJ <laughs> Redick played. Oh, man. Channeling his inner JJ Redick from beyond the arc there. Way downtown. That's JJ range. That one was too. Back to back. Gerard, the response. And a 10 point advantage for Clemson. Another timeout taken. Well, Landon Bussey called the two early timeouts when they left Gerard open early in the game. And sometimes you have to keep, re keep reminding your team, even running back in transition, you just can't run back and with your head down. You've got to identify, even if he's not your man or it's not on your side of the zone, someone's got to be near him. And Brad Brownell is hot as well because he's not happy giving up 35 points in the first half. Definitely a defensive-minded coach who prides himself on that side of the ball, but Gerard has 13 points, has made three triples, and Gerard coming into the year over 1,700 points in his career, just the second ACC player since 1992, 1993, with over 1,700 career points, over 300 threes made, and 450 assists. ESPN's Jay Will, Jay Williams, just the other one. He played ball too, coach. Not just a commentator. <laughs> well, those guys were great players. They certainly were. <laughs> and are great commentators. And Joe Gerard's really done a nice job tonight of playing good, solid man-to-man -man defense. They've been improving that in his time at Clemson. Coach Brownell said, look, he was in a 2-3 zone for much of his career at Cuse. He's still developing habits on how to play man-to-man. -man. He can score and he can pass with the best of them. And that three won't fall. Nice Euro step, driving, swooping, other side of the basket. There for Gaines Wyatt. Malik Gaines Wyatt, just not to be deterred, and it just a quick push and transition. Alcorn State, whoever gets it, gets it and goes. Too strong. PJ Hall, a load to deal with inside. Well, they're trying to deny him down low, but he's just doing a great job of reverse pivoting and just backing his man down, carving out space, gets big, has the super soft hands, and then the great footwork. With that bucket, P.J. Hall now in double figures for 16 consecutive games dating back to last year. Shot clock, clock off. Clemson can hold for the final attempt of the half. JG3. Hunter swooping in from the baseline. He'll go to the line. Well, that's where having a guy like Joe Girard is so valuable because Chase Hunter usually plays the point, but at the end of the clock, then they space the court a little bit, put Hunter in the corner, a little two man game at the top between Hall and Girard. And then if you over help, Girard did a nice job of finding Hunter in the corner. First free throw rolls off. Here's your lineup for the ACC SEC Men and Women's Basketball Challenge. First on the men's side, Tuesday night, Mississippi State, Georgia Tech, 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Then on Wednesday, finishing the night for the men's, Georgia faces FSU at 9.15. Also on Wednesday for the women, it's UF, Georgia Tech at 5, and Vandy and number 10 NC State at 7.15. Catch all the action on ACC Network and the ESPN app. 2.2 seconds left. Half court heave. Misses everything. Well, they have to get back and get their defense set. I think Alcorn State's done a good job of just kind of rushing up the floor and attacking before Clemson has made them play five against five against a set defense. Alcorn State had 1.15 points per possession in that first half. Good start for the Tigers defense. They played much better in the second half against the Broncos of Boise State. The drive, is it a blocking foul? It is. Count it, and one for Chase Hunter. 
Chase Hunter does such a good job of, of knifing his way through the defense. Either hand, body control, takes the hit. It still finishes in traffic with the foul. Hunter, the senior out of Atlanta. Really evolved as a point guard last year for Brad Brownell. 26 double-figure scoring games. The game winner right at the end at Florida State. Evolved into a true guard. They're challenging him on the defensive side of things to try and pick up the other team's point guard, but as he gets a steal here, you get the feeling the Tigers, they're going to take a step forward. It might be up to Hunter. They got him in the book, though. That three makes it a 17-point advantage. Well, Brad Brownell was not happy at the end of the first half just because of the his team's an inability to get some stops in the half court. Alcorn State had some more than usual easy opportunity against a stingy Clemson defense, but they're not going to go away. They've got a lot of pride, this team. You know, but Coach Bussey has got them fired up to play tonight, and even with the hard schedule that they've had all week. Again, Alcorn not going to play until December 10th. They have two different stretches this season where they don't play for over two weeks. And Gerard, mid-range, jumper short. Gaines Wyatt. The freshman. Thorn, yes! Nine for Thorn. The lead down to 12 for the Tigers. Clemson got caught ball watching a little bit as the ball swung to that wing and Thorne just kind of stepped into that or open area at the top. Good ball movement. A dribble, a three, short, O oh board. Hall, a nice second half to start. He's got five, lead back to 14. Well, Alcorn State's guards have to do a better job of digging in. They can't just leave their bigs in there alone to rebound against Hall. They have to rebound by committee. Clemson plus 10 on the boards are in this one tonight. How about Hall? You've seen it now from all three levels. He is truly fascinating. Now you can't let him catch the ball that easily. And if they're, they're going to throw it into him that easily, they must double down in the post. Jump ball. And that'll go the other way for Clemson. P.J. Hall, 16 points now tonight. Six rebounds, four assists. Hall had 27 in Asheville against UAB. His career high is 28. He did it a couple of times last year. The inbound coming for Shefflin. Coach, what kind of opportunities does it present everyone else when you have a player like P.J. Hall that is so versatile as a big man? Well, first of all, you've got to have a coach that puts him in, you know, a system that takes advantage of what he does best, and that's what Brad Brownell does. And the thing about Clemson is they're always going to be solid because they don't turn it over. Brad is a really good fundamental offensive coach, and you can see they move him around. They don't it's not easy to guard him because he, you don't know where he's going to be. They'll post him up in the middle of the paint. They'll post him up on the boxes. They'll put him out in the short corner. They'll put him out to the wing. And they've got a lot of movement and kind of misdirection around him. So that's what the challenge is, is that you've got to have moving parts to defend P.J. Hall. Clemson red hot shooting from beyond the arc. And again tonight. As that shot misses, they're 9 of 17, came in top 20 in the country in three-point percentage as a team, well over 40% as a squad. Got shooters everywhere. And you got P.J. Hall as well. Makes life easy. Not that time, though. Well, it's hard to double because he's got such good size and he's a very willing and able passer. So if, if you overextend, he'll make you pay by kicking it back out to Gerard or Hunter. Clemson up 16. In control at Little John, second half. Well, again tonight. Well, Arya, 
Versatility sometimes is an overworked or oversaid little word, but it's a big word for B.J. Hall because of the fact he does it all in a lot of different ways. He can score inside, outside. He's a willing and able passer, tough defender, good rebounder, and experience, but above all, he's just a winner. He plays to win. He just has that look on his face from the opening tip. He got 17 20 point performances in his career. He's nearing that number again tonight. And when it's your night, shots like that fall. He's got 19, another three. Clemson starting to pull away. Long distance attempt, not going to fall. 19 point advantage for the Tigers. Well, they're getting into the rhythm right now, and it starts with their defense. And you when know, they can get out and run a little bit and kind of get into their flow, that's when Clemson's dangerous. Sengovic, 12 footer. And by 17, the Tigers return to third most points per game in college basketball from a season ago. Only TCU and Arkansas bring back more points that have played at the college level. Experience, versatility, depth. This Brad Brownell team is poised to build off of 23 wins a year ago. That was a heat check for Hall. Not a couple empty possessions, though. Brad Brunell's not, not happy. He wants a little bit more consistency. First, you had the one-hand pass from Gerard, and then the kind of a quick shot by Hall. Tell you what, DeKedron Thorne has impressed this evening for the Braves. Well, he has. He's a good catch-and-shoot guy. And Alcorn State's running some nice stuff in the half court, a little dribble handoff. Clemson didn't get out and contest on the perimeter. Got five threes now tonight. Did hit nine against UT Arlington in their last contest. Braves expected to contend again for the SWAC. They've won the last two regular seasons. They've turned into NIT appearances. As Texas Southern has hoisted the league tournament crown. Little screen on the baseline. RJ Godfrey just trying to set that baseline runner screen for Joe Girard, and he, he slid into an area. He did not have legal position down low. You watch it trying to run a little step. Here comes Girard on the baseline. They're going to try to screen his man, and then Godfrey just moved. It's a moving screen. That's a good call. Randall Godfrey. RJ's father, 11-year NFL vet who played for the Cowboys, for the Commanders. Titans, Seahawks, Chargers. No doubt proud of his son, RJ, who has made a big leap from his freshman to sophomore a year. Well, it's hard enough to get today's players to set screen, so I don't think Brad Brunell was upset that RJ was trying to set a screen and moved into his man. There he is. Left block. Nice post move. Well, that's how you reward someone who's trying to set a screen, even though he committed a foul. You, know, you run a little iso down low, and really nice footwork by Godfrey. 12 points against Winthrop to start the year for Godfrey. Defensively, has a knack for, for blocking shots. Ooh, nice. Mid-range, step back, jumper. Jalen Hawkins. Alcorn now the zone from Alcorn. Yeah, they're, they're really aggressive in the area. He, they, 
They don't just sit back. They're got their hands up. They're active. They're looking for deflections, and they're right there on the catch. You wouldn't know that they've played four games in their last six days, Coach. Trying to get back in this one, down 14. Joshua, the 5'10 senior out of NOLA, who has had himself quite a week. 21 points on Wednesday against UT Arlington and 20 against TCU right before that, the night before on Tuesday. But they fought. Got to give the Braves a lot of credit. Clemson, 6 of 12 now from the free throw line. 50%. They shot well, though, from the floor. 50% in both of those areas as well. Good oh, defensive good stand. Yeah, good job by Hall and Shefflin of just... Presenting resistance at the rim. Leads to an open three, but the put back there by Hunter. Ooh, the elevation by Hunter in traffic out of his area. 12 for Hunter to go along with five assists. Friendly touch, and the shooters bounce for Jalit Gaines Wyatt. Hunter, reverse layup, no. Hall, Hemingway, he can stroke it. Too strong. Good recovery by Alcorn State. And then the run out. On the feed. Jahi Benet going to the line. Junior from Nice in France. Rattles the first one home. Want to remind you tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern, the ACC huddle crew gets you set for another afternoon of college football. 6.30, get a complete wrap-up of those games as we prep you for primetime matchup on ACC Network at 8. Then after the game, a full post-game show to wrap up the night. All of it right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Championship season coming up, a little bowl season. Best time of year for college football. Got our ACC championship game in Charlotte. Not this weekend, but next, Florida State, Louisville. That got a little more interesting with the injury to Jordan Travis. And how about the job Coach Brom has done in his first season? The head man of the Cardinals. Oh, Hall, he's got a 20-piece now. Now, if you don't have the size against him, he's almost unguardable. And Alcorn State's doing a pretty good job of just forcing him off his sweet spot, but he's just too big, too long, too talented. 21 and 8 for PJ. Four assists as well. Third team ACC member last year after averaging 15 points per game. Shefflin throwing it down. Shuffling. He's a hard man to guard as well. He's, he doesn't look for the ball. They don't look for him, but he just finds ways to get open and then delivers. He's got eight and nine rebounds. Double-double watch for Shefflin. Oh, reaching on the drive by Gaines Wyatt. Ian Shefflin is a guy who just does a good job of moving without the ball. The little ghost screen on ball reversal and Alcorn State gets caught ball watching. Shefflin really started to come along last season for the Tigers. Big games against Notre Dame, against NC State to end the year, especially in the ACC tournament. Was strong defensively against Duke and that upset at Little John here for the Tigers. He plays so hard and he's strong, he's tough and, and smart. Shefflin out of Loganville, Georgia. One for two at the line for Gaines Wyatt. 16-point advantage for the Tigers at home here is Shefflin. 
A haul from the logo. Gerard. Hall had it rejected. Great defense and closeout from Benet. Might have been a little rush from P.J. Hall. Starting to feel it a little bit, though. Wanted that little fade away from the corner. They had big things planned for Hall. How about that turnaround? Oh, couldn't get it to crawl over the rim. But P.J. going back to the line for two. It was actually pretty good defense. But Hall so crafty and so long and strong on the baseline. He's hard to close out. I mean, they look like Alcorn State had him closed out, but he found a way to twist and turn and get that reverse angle to the rim. Tomorrow on the football side, we've got a loaded slate. Starts at noon Eastern with Pitt and Duke, and then Virginia Tech against Virginia, then capping the day. UNC versus number 22, NC State at eight. All three games also available on the ESPN app. Heels and pack. Again, Dave Doran, a wonderful coaching job, has gotten NC State back into the top 25. P.J. Hall closing in, nearing his career high of 28. Clemson by 18. Benet wins the battle on the putback. How about Benet the last couple of moments? Oh, he's been terrific. He just He's so long and athletic around the rim, but also defensively he's doing a good, pretty good job, as good as you can get against Hall with it for his lack of size. Hall fouls on that interior feed. Gaines Wyatt. They've had some great players at Clemson, some great bigs. You think about Trevor Booker. You think about guys like Hunter Tyson, a wing player. P.J. Hall right up there, isn't he? He is right up there. There's no doubt about it. You know, the thing about him is that he's it's been this you saw the talent as a youngster but he, every year he developed another little small piece to his game and he never but he never forgot who he was i mean sometimes bigs they start to think about the nba and then they want to step out and they want to show you they, they can handle the ball or shoot it on the perimeter and he can do that and he has done that but he still has not forgotten that he understands that i'm a power player first and then i can add on to my game later no doubt, Coach. Guys like Blossom Game, Dante Grantham, K.J. McDaniels. There have been some really good ones. Hall going to be mentioned with those guys. Yeah, as Clemson fans, they'll tell you, if Dante Grantham never goes down back in 2017, we're making a Final Four. What a team they had with Marquise Reed, Gabe DeVoe. Sweet 16 team that year for Brad Brownell. Think about Clemson. They are very, very unselfish. They do a good job of attacking with their head up, understanding where their teammates are, and again, right there, looking for the open man on the backside. The 23rd assist of the night for Clemson, Benet. They'll call him for basket interference. It'll take us to a break. Tigers by 20. They're cruising in the second half. Being the best takes hard work. That's why. Now, that Benet actually did not commit offensive goaltending. That's a good call by the officials. And Benet with the attack on the rim, that's clearly outside the cylinder. Tremendous second effort. And as you mentioned earlier, he's, he's done a lot of good things tonight for Landon Bussey. He's got his career high now with 10 points to go along with seven rebounds. The Frenchman, 6'7", 215 pounds. He's going to be a problem in the SWAC this season.
Well, if they get better, you know, you, you want to go through this period of time. And, you know, the thing that you want to make sure when you're going on the road like this and you're taking some L's is that you keep your team spirit up and you don't get off the main goal, uh, which is to get better and try to improve from these games and learn from these road games. And then by the time you get the conference, you're ready. You're ready to go on the road and win in your own league where it's obviously a different level than you've been playing against. Still some opportunities to get better at VCU, at Maryland. Great defensive possession there for the Braves. Feisty group, used to winning. There he is, Benet! Clemson's very relaxed on that possession. Uh, Von Ell's trying to find the energy on defense. His team right now is good offensively, but defensively not as fundamental as Brad wants him to be. Hall now with 27. You know, that's where the depth can help as well. I mean, in these type of games, try to get your younger players into the game, get them playing with a little bit more fire defensively, the fire that you might need. But Alcorn State's not easy to guard because they're so fast. Sometimes a smaller smaller team is hard to defend because they've got so many undersized guys that are quick and play out on the perimeter. And there's just another example right there where they just drive and kick and they got caught ball watching again. Benet has eight of the last 10 for all Corn State. And one. Hunter slash into the hoop. Well, Chase Hunter can do a lot of different things off the bounce. And I think with this improved offensive team as far as balance, He's going to get more of these type opportunities where the floor just opens up and there are, you can see too late on the defensive end, no position around a basket and not outside the arc either. Hunter quietly has 15 points and seven assists. Opened the year with 10 assists and had that double-double with 10 points as well against Winthrop. You get the feeling Clemson might go, not just as P.J. Hall goes, but the way that Hunter can control tempo and pace against some of the ACC's best. Well, Clemson has a lot of options, and they can give you a lot of different looks on the offensive end. It starts with Hall. Inside, outside, wing, pick and roll, pick and pop, uh, putting the ball on the floor, and then Hunter running the team. You know, being an efficient point guard, ball handler, distributor, uh, defender at the top, and then Gerard, you know, the experience. The, the experience of those two, invaluable, especially when they get to the ACC, because these guys have been through it many, many nights. You can run sets for guys like... P.J. Hall, but it's nice to have guys like Chase Hunter and Joe Girard late in the shot clock. Here he is. Nice moves from Hunter. Gerard now three of eight, but a third possession coming for Clemson. That's where P.J. Hall is the most, so smart. They didn't score, but Bach was winding down. He knew to come out and set a ball screen or flash up to the high post to kind of relieve some pressure, and then they get the offensive rebound and do score. 11-3 of the night for Clemson. Hunter has 18. Well, 
One of the best outside shooting teams in the country. The Tigers have been hot again here this evening against the Braves. Lions went up. Now that time for Clark. Sweet mid-range stroke. Gerard from a nice pass. He has been icy tonight, three of nine for Gerard, one of the best shooters in the country. It's good offense though by Clemson. They went ball side, then weak side, then they skipped it. The terrific concepts against the zone. They moved the ball well, they were patient. Joe just going through a little bit of a cold stretch in this second half. and then too aggressive over the top. Clemson plus 10 here in the second half, outscoring Alcorn 36-26. On their way to win number five on the year. It gets tougher for the Tigers though. Starting with the road trip to Tuscaloosa next week. Oh, another nice shot. They've got to give Alcorn State a lot of credit. You know, they played hard tonight. Obviously, don't match up talent-wise, but they came in here. They didn't just mail it in, that's for sure. They gave, they made Clemson play to win this game. There's a new career high for P.J. Hall. 29 points. Foul called. They're going to count the basket. It will be a blocking foul on Hall. It's been P.J. Hall's night. Clemson in cruise control. Let's do it. Come on, Dad, get me. Plays so hard. In these type games, obviously every game is important, but... We all know, I mean, you know, playing the game a day after Thanksgiving, everybody's thinking about the holiday, no students are around, you're the only ones on campus, and you're playing a team that's one and six. You know, sometimes it's hard to get yourself, your team to play hard for 40 minutes, but right out of the gate tonight, P.J. Hall imposed his will, saying, I'm not letting anything negative happen, because we know, all know upsets can happen in college basketball, but P.J. Hall would not let that happen. Not tonight, at least, as Godfrey will go to the line for one more. We think this Clemson team can be pretty good. I think we'll find out how they stack up nationally. You got that game at Alabama. You got non-conference games still against TCU and a, a much improved Memphis team. Alabama got beat tonight. Ohio State knocked them off. So I think just there's a not dissimilar to a year ago where there's just 15 to 20 teams that could emerge during the season. There's a lot of teams that look alike. Sankovic. Can't hit the first. Your lineup for the ACC, SEC, men's and women's basketball challenge. First on the men's side, Tuesday, Mississippi State, Georgia Tech at 7. Then on Wednesday, finishing the night for the men's, Georgia and Florida State at 9.15. Also on Wednesday for the women, it's Florida, Georgia Tech, and Vandy, and 10th ranked NC State. Hammondway battled injuries last year. Limited minutes again tonight. Can't finish on that drive. Gambrel going to the line for two more.
Brad Brunel talked about you know, the fine line of developing your bench, but also understanding that you put guys in, and if all of a sudden you lose some momentum, then you've got to go back to the normal guys. And you know, how do you develop a bench? But I think he's done a good job of balancing that so far this season in their five games. And now I think he's going to have to use these guys in these upcoming tests. And I think they're probably more ready than they would have been if he hadn't just well, he's given them a lot of minutes. You know, some of these sophomores, Dylan Hunter, you know, Jack Clark coming off the bench, Hemingway coming off the bench, Godfrey. I mean, these kids, these guys are all going to have to help them moving forward. We asked him straight up this week, what's been the message to the team as you approach the new year? You get left out of the tournament with 23 wins, 14 ACC wins. And he said, look, yeah, you know, it scarred us. It hurt us a little bit, but we have so many new pieces this year that we can't make that our mantra. We can't let that be the reason why we play. And so while it stung us and we disagreed with the decision, we're ready to turn the corner. And maybe this is the year that Clemson gets back to the NCAA tournament. Once you get there, who knows? There's a foul going the other way, but clear right, coach, when you get to the big dance. A big man and a good point guard can take you a long way. It can. And, you know, Clemson could be one of those teams that could be sneaky in March for sure. I think they, they've early got the look of a team that's you know, one of those teams that you've seen in the past. Get snubbed or get close to the tournament or lose in the first round. And the next year, they return a lot of guys. They add some pieces, and then they're they're ready to go. And I think that's Clemson this year. Cool to see the Tigers reaching into their depth. Saw Daniel Nassif, a former undergrad manager, promoted this season, gets into the game. Beetle gives Clemson the 90 mark. Matt Kelly in there as well. That three misses. You know, we Andrew were Latif. Kidding. We were kidding with Brad Brownell about the tough conference, non-conference schedule, and we were saying, hey, who's this? Some, someone's not in charge of that or watching that very closely, but truth be told, he is watching that, and he understands. I think he looks forward to that challenge to see what he has. You don't want to get to January and not really know what you have. And I think he knows he's got a good basketball team and he wants to challenge them to be ready for these early season games so they, in fact, are ready for the ACC. Without a doubt, Coach, last season in January, Clemson was top of the leaderboard in the ACC standings heading into the month of February. And what a stark contrast between that moment and missing the tournament altogether. But again, they have the pieces to be dangerous. Brad Brownell said we can be better than we were last year. P.J. Hall, one of the best players in the country, definitely in the conference. To get a guy like Gerard, he could be the difference down the stretch too. And more depth makes all the difference. Final few seconds, they're gonna take off the clock. Clemson moving to five and oh. A dominant second half, and thankful, no doubt, here on this holiday weekend.